This presentation will focus on David Bowie's song, Life on Mars. To start, I will offer a brief background to the singer, then I will look at the song, how the song came about, and then I will look at the lyrics specifically, focusing on what other people thought of the lyrics, what Bowie himself thought of the lyrics, and then I will conduct my own full lyric analysis, drawing on my own interpretation of the song. David Robert Jones, or better known as David Bowie, was born in 1947. He was hugely successful in the 1970s, but had an extremely long career, from 1962 to present day. His music formed part of the rock and glam rock genre, and he was also a keen musician as he played a variety of instruments. Now let's look at the song Life on Mars in some more depth. Life on Mars was released in 1971 on the album Hunky Dory. It was later released as a single in 1973 and reached number three in the UK. It has been described as the standout song on the album. It was released 30 years later because of its use on the British TV series Life on Mars. The song featured Mick Ronson on guitar and Rick Wakeman on piano. The song's melody resembles Frank Sinatra's My Way and there is an explanation as to why. In 1968, Bowie had written English lyrics for a French song called Comme de Habitude, calling his version Even a Fool Learns to Love. Soon afterwards, Paul Anker bought the rights and rewrote this song as My Way. Bowie later recorded Life on Mars as a parody in anger at having missed out on a fortune. However, the hunky Dory liner notes that the song was merely inspired by Frankie. Here are two quotes from The Telegraph and the BBC talking about the lyrics of the song. It's one of the strangest lyrics ever, consisting of slew and surreal images like a Salvador Dali painting. Bowie's abstract, cut-up lyrics force you to invest the song with something of yourself just to make sense of the experience. And like all great songs, it's got a lovely tune. John Harris, journalist and author, also commented on the lyrics, stating... Life on Mars is a sort of magic realism, really, if you listen to it. You recognise it as a song about Britain, and there are references in it which anyone who grew up in suburbia would understand. It is very mundane and yet magical. He's seen the cosmos in the bus stop. I also found it interesting to consider what Bowie himself said about the song. About the album, he says, I think I was getting nearer to what I wanted to do, which was to create this alternative world, stepping off this planet and going somewhere else. As for the song itself, Bowie said, the song is about a sensitive young girl's reaction to the media. Later he added, I think she finds herself disappointed with reality, that although she's living in the doldrums of reality, she's being told that there's a far greater life somewhere, and she's bitterly disappointed that she can't have access to it. I am now going to conduct a full lyric analysis, looking at the first verse, the chorus, and then the second and final verse. To begin, I will play the first verse. awful small affair to the girl with the mousy hair but her mummy is yelling no and her daddy has told her to go but her friend is nowhere to be seen now she walks through her sunken dream to the seat with the clearest view and she's hooked to the silver screen But the film is a sad thing for For she's lived it ten times or more She could spit in the eyes of fools And they ask her to fall I'm first going to look at the narrative of the song as the narrative structure follows Prop's 1969 function. Every line offers a piece of narrative that helps initially situate the song. To the first line, it's God awful small affair to the girl with the mousy hair. We find out who the song is about, an unhappy girl, and she is the primary actor. But her mummy is yelling no, and her daddy has told her to go. This informs us that her parents are arguing and her father wants her to leave. But her friend is nowhere to be seen. Now this could be that her parents are arguing and disowning her because she is pregnant and the father has disappeared. Or perhaps it's simply suggesting she is just lonely and has very few friends. And she's hooked to the silver screen. She goes to the cinema to escape her troubles. But, as we see, the cinema is boring to her. The film is a saddening bore. She feels the film resembles her own life, for she's lived it ten times or more. As we've learnt through these first set of lyrics, the girl has a troubled life. Perhaps the films do not appeal to her because she has lived through so many of the dramas and problems herself. 
There is also a contrast between the lyrics and the music at this point. When he speaks of the humdrums of the girl's life, the orchestra is building up into something quite extravagant. I'm now going to look at some of the lyric analysis theory and identify the specific types of lines we see in this first part of the song. This is according to Halliday, 1985, who lists a set type of lines we see in songs. The main ones we see here are behavioural and existential. For example, she walks through her sunken dreams. There is also a verbal line, her mummy is yelling no. In the first verse, they are mainly behavioural though, because it's telling the narrative and it's telling us what the girl has done. I will now focus on the chorus, but before I analyse it, let's take a listen. So the girl is made to consider more important things happening in the world. For example, take a look at the lawman beating up the wrong guy, could be talking about police brutality. And once if he'll ever know he's in the best-selling show, could refer to the way live news coverage was becoming more mainstream. The media was becoming so all-encompassing of our lives and we began mimicking it, even the dangerous and negative aspects. Look at those cavemen go is a line from Alley by the Hollywood Argyles and is the first intertextual reference. Old man is a cry for help and as is, is their life on Mars. Now this is also a rhetorical question asking if life gets any better or if there is somewhere she can escape to. Again I will draw on the work of Halliday to look at what types of line are being used here. They are mainly behavioural, for example, take a look at the lawman, sailors fighting in the dance hall and beating up the wrong guy, and there is also a mental, old man, wonder if he'll ever know, and a possible relational, is their life on Mars. It could be relational as he is comparing Earth with Mars and wondering if there is any escape from it all. I will now focus on the second verse which I find most interesting, let's take a listen to the lyrics. on the merry cow's tortured brow that Mickey Mouse has grown up the cow and now the workers have struck for fame cause Lennon's on sale again see the mice in their million hordes from Ibiza to the Norfolk broads Blue Britannia is out of bounds to my mother, my dog and clowns But the film is a sad thing for Cause I wrote it ten times or more It's about to be written again And I ask you to know So really the song is split in two halves lyric wise Where the first half focuses on the girl and her individual struggles The second half focuses on issues in society at large the first line is, it's on America's tortured brow that Mickey Mouse has grown up a cow. Mickey Mouse could represent America as a whole and the way its society has evolved. It could refer to the Disney Corporation by comparing Mickey Mouse to a cash cow. An innocent character like Mickey Mouse has been turned into a capitalist venture, i.e. Disneyland. The next line is, now the workers have struck for fame because Lennon's on sale again. This could refer to the Beatles member John Lennon or Russian communist Lennon, who were both working class heroes. I would say it's more likely John Lennon, perhaps referring to the celebrity culture and celebrities' greater influence on the general public than politicians. John Lennon also released a song called Working Class Hero in 1970. This could be a nod to Lennon in this song and is another intertextual reference. The next line is, see the mice in their million hordes from Ibiza to the Norfolk Broads. This line exposes the extent of the problem that is happening in all Western countries. It could be referring to the masses who follow Western mainstream media too literally, those who ignorantly accept what life offers and do not challenge the dominant messages. But the film is a saddening bore, because I wrote it ten times or more, it's about to be written again. 
I suggest this could be referring to the girl from the first verse, which draws the narrative in to make it more rounded. It suggests that she creates the drama herself when it says, I wrote it ten times or more. And when he says it's about to be writ again, it suggests that life is one drama after another. Looking at Halliday's lyrics types, it is interesting to see we have more variety in the second verse. There's relational, from Ibiza to the Norfolk Broads, behavioural, because I wrote it ten times or more, and also now material, now the workers have struck for fame. There is a move towards the material lyrics as the song begins to question society at large and as a whole, rather than the individual girl and her individual actions. In conclusion, it is a highly regarded song by Bowie fans and critics alike, and there are many different interpretations of the lyrics, however most would agree the song is split into two. The first half looks at the girl and the struggles she faces and therefore uses a lot of behavioural lines, while the second half focuses more on society at large rather than the individual and therefore makes use of more material lines.